Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. My name is Nadia and Sands. This, of course, is Learn How to Edit Stuff. And today, we are making subtitles so you can make your memes and also so you can stop asking me for this tutorial. I get comments and messages from you guys all the time. Ian, how do I make subtitles like insert random YouTube meme maker here? Or how do I do titles like XYZ person? So we're gonna pull back the curtain a little bit today. I'm gonna show you guys best practices, tips and tricks inside of After Effects, saving it out as an essential graphics preset so that you can call it up very easily inside of Adobe Premiere. We're also going to save these subtitles and titles and everything to an Adobe Creative Cloud library that's gonna allow you just to pull it up inside of Premiere, send a link to somebody else to use it. It's gonna be very, very simple. We're gonna do a lot of the work up front so that your work later ends up being very easy. Subtitles suck. Having to type all that stuff out sucks, but we're gonna try to make it as less sucky as possible, as easiest as possible. So just bear with me. We're gonna do a lot of work up front so that it's easier for you guys at the end. Okay, you cool with that? You don't really have a choice. If you're still watching this video, open up Adobe After Effects because we are getting started right now. All right, kiddos, After Effects is open and the first thing we're gonna do is start a new composition. 1920 by 1080 at five seconds long is exactly perfect for this tutorial. Click OK. And then what I want you guys to do is add in a fairly generic sentence. And this is going to serve as our template for our subtitle. And then I'm going to center my anchor point, which is currently down here. And why is this important? Because if I were to rotate this text, it's gonna rotate from the anchor point, and that's weird. I don't like that. So my hotkey for this is Alt-C to center that anchor point. The After Effects default is Control, Alt, and Home. So do that. So now when we rotate or do anything, uh, it's rotating from the center of the text layer. And then under Align, I'm going to align it to the horizontal and vertical center of my composition. And for me, I like to keep all of my subtitles in the center because it just makes things easier. And then once you get them into Premiere, you can just like lower them down in frame wherever you want. Some people like to put subtitles kind of all over the place, but starting from center is going to guarantee that nothing weird happens during the process. Just my workflow. I would also suggest making it your workflow, but hey, do whatever you want. So now we are going to style this subtitle like you are used to seeing on YouTube. So I'm going to come to my character panel and I'm going to go to stroke and I'm going to add a random magenta stroke to this and boom, I now have a YouTube subtitle. This is the thing that you see all the time, different stroke colors for different people talking or whatever. It's a fairly, you know, they're kind of all the same, but the animation is what's going to make it yours. So I'm going to teach you all the information on how to do it. And then I'm expecting you to kind of go and design your own using my secret sauce. Cool. You don't really have a choice. Let's keep going. So we have designed the look and feel of our subtitles. Now we need to make it animate. And so for this one, I'm just going to have it scale in very rapidly like you're used to seeing on YouTube by adding a scale keyframe going over one, two, three keyframes, adding another scale keyframe, going back to the first keyframe and turning it to zero. So now it just scales up from zero. There you go. And uh, motion wouldn't be motion without motion blur. So I'm going to turn on motion blur for my layer. So now as it's moving, you see it's motion blur. That looks really nice. And the last thing I'm going to do is highlight my keyframes, hit F9 to easy ease, open up my graph editor. And then I'm going to just tweak this a little bit and pull these over so that it comes out very fast and then settles a little bit slower. It's only three frames, so this isn't really going to make a huge difference, but it's these little details that make your animations kind of stand out above other people because they're not linear. There's a nice little Bezier curve on it. So this is what I like to do. Again, this is what I think that you should do. And now we've got a nice little scale animation right there. So what I want to do is I want to do all of the animation first. I'm going to show you guys a little trick. Uh, once we get this into Premiere, I basically want this to be able to animate in and animate out, but I don't want to like be beholden to any length of time. Basically what I'm saying is I want to be able to time stretch this layer in Premiere so that as I'm talking and subtitles need to be on screen longer, I have the option to lengthen them or shorten them and still have in and out animations. This will make a little bit more sense once we dive in. So what I'm going to do is just copy and paste these keyframes in reverse order at one second, one, two, three over to here. Boom. I'm going to hit N on the keyboard to bring my work area over here. And now I'm going to right click and go to trim comp to work area. And now what I'm going to do is make protected regions for my animation by hitting N on the keyboard again and just dragging this over just so my work area region is right where my keyframes are. Right clicking on that 
and go to create protected region from work area. You'll see that it will highlight blue. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing down here. I'm gonna hit B for beginning, right click, go to create protected region from work area. And now both my intro and outro animations are considered protected regions, which means that I will be able to stretch all of the time in between the keyframes as long or as short as I want while still retaining my intro and outro animations. And I will show you that once we get to the premiere stage. But right now we are building our essential graphics workflow. And again, like I said at the beginning, work a lot at the beginning so you don't have to work at all pretty much at the end. Cool, let's keep going. So we've got our animations and we've got our styling. So now it's kind of time to start building an essential graphics workflow. So come up here to window and open up the essential graphics panel and you'll see that it says select a composition. And I'm now realizing that we haven't named this. So let's name this uh, scale up fast sub. Cool. Now the primary composition scale up fast sub. And now we're gonna start adding stuff into here. I know I'm gonna have two primary uh, functions here, which is the text and the stroke around the outside of the text. So I'm gonna add my groups now. Uh, I'm gonna add this for text and I'm going to add another group for stroke. Cool, so now we're gonna start adding stuff to this, but we actually forgot a step and that is to add uh, animators to our text because you can't actually add essential graphics information from the character panel. So very simply, tool down your text layer right here and go to animate. We're going to add a fill color RGB. We are also going to add a stroke color RGB and last but not least, the stroke width. And then I'm just gonna quickly uh, turn these back to where they were, or general area of where they were. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna be able to change these later. Okay, great. So. Now that I have everything built out and exactly how I want it, I will now name this sub scale up fast. And then I'm going to click on solo supported properties, which is gonna open up every property I can throw into my essential graphics panel. And I'm also going to set the poster frame because this is the thumbnail that will show up in Premiere. So you're gonna want it to look recognizable to some degree. So now let's start dragging and dropping. Starting with source text, I'm going to drag this right up into my essential graphics window under the text group, and I'm going to edit the properties, and I'm also going to enable custom font selection. I don't want to enable custom font size adjustment because that will actually screw up your formatting, and I'm gonna show you a way to get around that in just a second, but custom font selection, totally okay by me. We are also going to add the fill color into our text folder, and we are going to name this text color. Perfect. And now for our stroke, we want to throw in the stroke color and the stroke width, as well as text position on screen because I kind of want to be able to move this uh, up and down, left and right later. I don't always want it to be centered. So I'm also going to add the text position to our text folder and make sure that you guys are labeling this something that you're going to remember that makes sense. So text position, text color, source text. Cool, that totally makes sense. Stroke width and stroke color also makes sense to me. And you can reorder these however you want, stack them however you want. It's up to you. All right, this is looking pretty good for me. And the one thing that you guys are not seeing over here is text size. And that's because if I were to increase the text size over here, you'll notice that my anchor point actually doesn't stay centered with the text, which is super, super annoying. So one workaround that I have found for that is coming up here to layer, new, null object. And then we're just going to parent our text layer to the null object. Go ahead and click on S for scale and then drag this scale property right up here into our text window. And we're gonna call this text size. And now we are using the null object to control the scale, which means that our anchor point is always going to stay centered, which is super, super important for doing anything, again, like rotation or scale itself. So the text size is going to be controlled by a null object which is also included in this essential graphics panel. And that, ladies and gentlemen, kind of rounds it out. Make sure that you are stacking this in a way that you like. So just like that, and if you guys are copying me, we have a nice scale up and scale down animation here that we are now going to put into Adobe Premiere so that we can continue making meme subtitles easily by doing the work up front first so that we don't have to work hard later. That is the key. That's the key to winning life and also editing, trust me. So now we are ready to export this as an essential graphics template. Click on export motion graphics template. It will ask you to save, of course hit yes. And now we can do a couple different things. First off, destination. Uh, this is where you can save it to an Adobe library. If you guys don't know how to make an Adobe library, all you have to do is open up Adobe Creative Cloud, go to your work, and then it will allow you to create a new library right up here at the top by clicking on this plus icon. And I'm gonna create new library and I'm gonna call this uh, subtitles. Okay, cool, create. 
I have created a subtitle library. Now I will just exit out of this. And in here under export motion graphics template, it will ask me where I want to save it to. And I'm going to put it in the subtitles library that I just created right there. And we are going to add some keywords. So sub enter, subtitle, enter. That's sun title. Oh God, subtitle. Oh my God, I can't spell subtitle. There we go. Uh, scale up, meme. And of course, learn how to edit stuff because that's how I find all the stuff that I make. And now I'm gonna click okay. It has now saved that to my essential graphics library. And if you guys want, you could also save it as a file on your computer. You'll see right over here under libraries, under subtitles, the motion graphics template has already popped up. And that is great. If you wanted to save it to a local file on your computer, same format, export motion graphics template, come over here to local drive, pick your drive, which I'm going to save it to my editing assets, essential graphics presets. And I'm gonna call this learn how to edit stuff, scale up fast, click save, same exact thing here, sub, learn how to edit stuff. Click okay. And now it is saved both locally and in an Adobe Creative Cloud library. Now how you access this inside of Adobe Premiere, I'm gonna save that real quick, open up Adobe Premiere, and now in a blank composition, I'm going to add that subtitle that we just made by coming up here to libraries and going to subtitles and look, there it is. And I'm going to drag and drop that straight onto my timeline. It will load up everything. And now ladies and gentlemen, I have this After Effects animated title inside of Adobe Premiere and it is all editable from the graphics panel. All I have to do is change the sentence. And lo and behold, I now have this nice animation. The text is different. I can come over here and I can change the stroke color to be something different, uh, maybe like a lime green. I can change the stroke width. God, that is an ugly color. I apologize for that. Let's just make it something a little bit nicer, maybe like a blue or a purple. Ah, that's nice. And I can change the stroke width over here. I can change the text size with our null object, keeping the anchor point centered, which we like. I can change the text font. I can change the text position. And now I am able to kind of put this wherever I want to. And because we made protected regions, you can see right now that this animation is only one second long, in and out at one second. I can now drag this to be however long I want. Eight seconds, you wanna watch it in real time? Here we go, animate in. We've stretched that entire time in between because we have protected regions and then it will animate out. Oh, brilliant. So now we have full, complete, customizable control in Adobe Premiere so that when you guys are doing your videos and you need to put a bunch of subtitles in, a bunch of people talking, your own person talking, yourself talking, that's what I meant to say. But now you can just drag and drop and just change the text super quick, change colors. And now it looks like you've put in a tremendous amount of work every video that you do, but you're not actually doing that much work during the video editing. You're doing all the work up front by making essential graphics presets for your videos all your titles, you can do this with scale, you can do this with rotation. Go in and repeat the same process that I just taught you, but make more complex animations. You can make text slide in from the side, and then you can make that a template. You can do single words as a template, and then you can just drop that in and you can make your videos more exciting. So definitely take the knowledge that I have given you in this video, and then apply it to something creative that you're doing for your own videos, for your own memes, for your own walkthroughs, whatever video you're working on, apply this knowledge to what you're doing. And I am already applauding you and I'm very proud of you. Now I understand that was a lot of information to take in, but let me try to boil it down for you in the most simplistic of terms. You're gonna do a lot of work up front. You're gonna make yourself a bunch of amazing templates that make it look like your videos are way more complicated than they are. And then you're gonna take those templates and you're just gonna utilize them in all of your videos and you're gonna be creative with your templates. And also if you'd like a little cheat sheet, a template yourself, I will leave the template that we just made today in the video description below so you can download it yourself. You can pick it apart. You can see what we did. I will also throw the After Effects project file in there so you can kind of dissect it if you guys would like. Don't say I never get you anything, all right? Your boy, Nani and Sands from Learn How to Edit Stuff always delivers. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I truly, truly appreciate it. If you have not subscribed to my channel, it is very simple for you to just click on that subscribe button, smash that thumbs up button, make the YouTube algorithm, love learn how to edit stuff. And uh, thank you guys for watching this video. There are links in the video description below for you to check out, download stuff. There are links to support you. There are links to support me. Join the Discord, follow me on social media. Happy holidays, guys. I'm having a baby. I don't know when I'm gonna be back. I don't know how often I'll be doing videos, but I am having a child. 
which is a lot of responsibility and a lot of time. So forgive me if I don't post videos regularly in the new year. I promise I will be back at some point with uh, probably awesome B-roll of my baby son, Leo. It's gonna be a good time. Thank you guys for watching this video so much. Make sure you subscribe, smash that like button, and I will see you in the next one.